All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Wednesday, January 12th, 2022. So markets higher today. Um, everybody's talking about the 7% inflation print and markets are now kind of um, popping up a little bit, coming off the highs here. Um, they did get a little bit of a sell-off in the morning and then just kind of a float and uh, markets getting a little bit of a bid about 15 minutes into the close here. Um, so what's going on? Uh, is inflation is now good for the market? Um, I don't understand what's going on. Well, let me tell you what's going on. There's a reason why we bought the dip on Monday. It is because we got into a technical area here. We got close to that 100 moving average on the SPY. And we got down to this uh, area here in the triple Q, the lower trend line on the composite. Uh, we got down into support in this zone here through the 200 moving average. By the way, we bought the dip. We took uh, another winner today. We took uh, two winners today, actually 9.6% on NVIDIA and uh, over 10% on Baidu there so um just crushing it right now up 3.66 percent for the whole year um so we're just killing it in carnivore trades right now if you want to get in on that um get in soon because i think i'm probably gonna be raising prices for new members on the first of the month but um as of right now we're just killing it and if you want to get on the action get in soon but anyways we bought this dip because it was a technical area did we think that there was going to be some narrative about oh inflation is going to be good for the market no it's just a technical bounce um and why is this happening because yields are pulling back nothing goes up in a straight line okay so we, you know yields were under resistance we talked about the 30 year specifically getting up into this area here so 30 year pulled back a little bit and that's giving the markets a lift it, and the charts are always ahead of the news and we're seeing that as the case right now there's really no sellers in this market yet i think they're kind of just waiting right now look at the volume here 55 million shares with about 10 or 12 minutes left to the close on the spy so there's no institutional buyers right now either so i it just it blows my mind. We, we get sentiment changes every other week here. Um, the sky was falling on Monday morning. When we were buying, the sky is falling on Monday morning. And now we're reaping the benefits. And now everybody's saying, oh, we're going back to all-time highs um, because whatever, or inflation is good for the market now, apparently. Everybody is so reactionary. And that's how, you know, as a trader, you got to just cut that noise out. And um, that's how you make money is by not paying attention to that news and just letting the charts telling you, Tell you what to do and that's what we do here but any case um let's get in and onto the uh, technicals here so the yield curve is flattening out a little bit as of today so we're seeing the 30-year green um just barely green flattish to green and then the uh, 10 year down 1.2 percent so a little bit of more of a pullback um on the 10 year and that is helping financials see the xlf here it is flattish right now but if you look at the money center banks JP Morgan Green, uh, Citigroup, uh, Wells Fargo, HSBC having a massive move here uh, off the lows here. This isn't this one's getting very extended though. And um, on the other hand, the non-money center banks, investment banks getting hit. Look at the broker dealers here, down three uh, quarters. Uh, Goldman Sachs down three percent, and Morgan Stanley. Uh, engulfing reversal there on Morgan Stanley down almost 3%. So money center banks uh, outperforming a little bit as the yield curve um, increases and steepens a little bit. So that is helping out the money center banks versus the uh, broker dealers. Uh, any case, let's look, talk about some tech plays here. So semiconductors um, getting a nice bounce today up eight tenths. If we can close above this red bar high, um, then maybe you can get up to that 312-ish area. I think I talked about that yesterday. So that would be your area there on the semis. NVIDIA, we sold that at 383 this morning. This one's pulling back a little bit. If it can close above this red bar high, maybe it can make a run at, you know, 295, maybe 300 or so um, in that range on NVIDIA. AMD is actually red right now. Um, so that one pulling back off the highs a little bit. Um, applied Materials Green up 4.6. KLA 10 Core up almost 2%, having a nice day there. TSM. Uh, my, uh, Micron also having decent days as well. So semis are holding up okay. The weak link right now in tech is cloud software. Um, so IGV down three tenths of a percent, not looking very good here. Um, and that has been the weak link lately in tech. Um, but the semis are holding up and um, 
you know, as long as they can hold up, tech can hold up. Um, so right now we talked about, um, let's look at the composite. There we go. Um, so this 100 moving average here on the composite and this trend line that is getting back tested now and it is pulling back off of that area the spy here um i think i said yesterday that 472 would be an area to watch and notice how that is an area so we got through that this morning saw a little bit of distribution and then now we've struggled to get above that on the rest of the day maybe they pop it up into the close i mean who really cares if they do that the point is um, this was an area that was going to be a uh, resistance and it was not just going to get right through that. The next area I have penciled in is around 474, 474, 50. So we'll have to watch that if it gets through that area or if it gets through this uh, 472 area. That's the next area that it's going to go to. Dow, um, I said the 465 handle didn't quite get there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, got through, got up to this red bar high. 364.65 and then pulling back a little bit. The weakest index has been the Russell 2000. Um, just very soft. I mean, look at the, look at how it's been today. Gapped up and then rolled right over. Got a little counter trend bounce. And just look at the weakness here in the small caps. And again, you know, I keep saying this over and over, but with yields pushing higher, small caps should be doing well. It's not. That is a sign of weakness for the market overall. Let's look at energy. So energy XLE up again. Um, this is starting to look a little long in the tooth, but it is continuing higher in the near term. XOP also up as well. I'm putting a little bit of a doji in there. That is into some resistance here at this red bar. So I would expect a pullback on the XOP here. Um, OIH um, actually negative today. So this one is into resistance here. This is where you broke down from previously. So uh, making sense that it is pulling back a little bit. Let's take a get crude. This one's also getting a little long in the tooth as well. Um, it's ex exceeded my price targets um, uh, quite a bit, actually. So I thought it would, you know, struggle with about 79.80. It had a little two-day pullback and now pushing right through that. But this is a really uh, pretty good size red bar here you're going into. Um, I do expect it to have to pull back eventually here. Um, but it is, you know, trading higher off the higher inflation print, I guess. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. And that gas. Look at this ripper here on that gas. Um, got all the way up to, I think, 485, 487, spot nine. So almost 488 there on that gas. Is in the resistance, though, that 100 MA. This is where you broke down from as well. Um, and on the weekly, you got that 20 week MA as well. So um, this is a failed bear pattern here. So I thought we would get another dip here in that gas. We didn't quite get that. Um, but this is does look like a failed bear pattern. So you, you guys know with failed patterns come really good moves. And um, we got one today on that gas. So um, give it the benefit of the doubt for now. But I do think if this is maybe around, maybe it gets up to $5 off of momentum, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to run into some headwinds. And there's a lot of resistance up here in that gas, at least in the near term. Um, dollar index, uh, the sky is falling for the dollar bowls, right? Um, at least that's what I keep hearing on Twitter. All the dollars coming back in, it's going to crash. Uh, well, not really. It's just, you just look at the weekly. Um, you, got, you guys got to look at these. You have to look at the, the bigger time frames. I see everybody always focuses on the daily and nobody ever pays attention to the weekly or the monthly. When you look at this weekly pattern here on the dollar, what do you see? It's just a back test of the 200 MA and potentially the 20 MA and potentially this uh, breakout here at 94.65. That's all it is. There's nothing wrong with this pattern at all. And I think this would be a good area to enter the dollar if you're looking to get long, um, personally. So this is a good area. I, I, you know, Maybe it gets down to 94.65, but after that, I do think we get a nice pop and the dollar um, eventually rips higher, uh, really in the first half of the year. Um, let's look at gold here. So gold um, up half a percent right now. Um, it is hanging in there, um, but not really getting that big of a bounce when you consider how big the uh, the dollar is down today. I mean, that's a bit, pretty ugly looking candle there on the dollar. And, um, you know, gold still has to get above this red bar high. If it can do that, you can get up to 1860, maybe 1865 before you're going to run into a wall of resistance. But it's holding up for now and getting a nice bid. Um, silver, same thing. I said 2350 would be your area. If you got above this red bar and that is happening, so silver near term, that's what you're looking at. Platinum, not really doing a whole lot today. Um, you know, it's 
it's still kind of just chopping around. This is all um, somewhat bullish consolidation, but uh, not really that big of a move here. And palladium not doing a whole lot either, just kind of flattish. Copper, on the other hand, did get above my level. So there we go. Nice volume behind it too. So um, copper on the move here. Um, you guys remember 464, that's going to be the area. Um, it did do a little bit more consolidating, so maybe you can get through that. Maybe you can get up to 465, 466 or so. Um, and, it, and it did have good volume on this little breakout, so it potentially can move past my original target here. Um, but again, it got above that 451 area, so um, copper may be on breakout. Let's take a look at the weekly. Yeah, so this pattern has taken a long time to develop here. Look at this green bar. And I said, it's all bullish consolidation as long as it holds this green bar low on a weekly close. And sure enough, it has. So we'll continue to watch this. Um, I'll, I'll do some more numbers on this tonight. And uh, maybe I'll get a, a better um, reading for some price targets for you guys tomorrow. Because um, they might have changed since uh, the last time I ran those numbers. But uh, in any case, copper, nice move there. Uh, overall nice job um, and then yeah let's uh, finish up here with Bitcoin and um, yeah we'll get going um, so yeah Bitcoin getting a bit along with everything else here up uh, just under three percent right now um, it is get it did get above this red bar so at this point yeah you're probably looking at about 44 45 thousand near term 20 MA this red bar is gonna be resistance you also have this uh, trend line here that is up sloping that will be resistance as well but notice how bitcoin hasn't really and i pointed this out yesterday it hasn't really um gotten the type of bounce that everything else has you know you look at all the tech stocks that have bounced really uh, really um hard and all these other stocks that have bounced really hard over the last couple of days and bitcoin just hasn't looked that strong in comparison so um again i'm not in love with crypto here and um that continues to be the case moving forward now doesn't mean it can't get a little bit of bit of a bid here but um it's it's definitely lagging the rest of the market anyways spider is about to close here in about a minute pulling back off the high so it looks like 472 is going to hold um at least for today and we'll see what happens tomorrow i don't really have any sort of um you know ultimately i still think that this market is headed lower uh, at some point i don't really have any sort of sell signal at this current time though um, but right now it is holding 472 and uh, we'll just respect it and we'll leave it at that and we'll look at the rest of the market for clues. In any case, uh, you guys take care. Have a great rest of your night and I will talk to you all tomorrow.